So if you, if you're starting in high school, I would assume that there's probably a lot of people on this high school team that quite possibly had been doing judo since they were much younger, you know, five-year-old kids that, so they're probably seven, eight years into their judo career and you're getting a late start. You're walking up to the high school program, even before you're in high school, even if you're in ninth grade, the difference between a ninth and a 12th grader, significant development differences. So eighth grade, uh, you're training with high school teams. So yeah, of course you're getting smoked. It's like high school wrestling for me. You're ninth grade. You're with, uh, you know, you're 14 versus some 18 year olds. There's like these yeah, guys, yeah. guys with the mustaches and stuff. You know, these are scary people. And, um, you, you, you work it, you're working through this. Like, obviously you're at the bottom side of these guys that are lifelong judoka. So how did you like maintain your determination going through that? You're, you know, you're walking to practice every day. You must be walking up that hill going, oh man, here we go again. Like what's going to happen. Tell us what you're well, thinking. Like what's, what's it like mentally trying to, to convince yourself to keep going through that every day? I think, oh, okay. Multiple parts. Like luckily uh, the head sensei, Roy Kawaji, who's still my head sensei at Portland judo, by the way, uh, he was the head coach of Pro City High School at that time. Um, he was obviously 20 plus years younger. I was way younger. So, but, but essentially, to answer your question, he made the program really fun. He made it more of a really team atmosphere. So you wanted to be there. At the same time, it was really physically grueling. He made sure that everybody was training. It was, it was very, uh, he would get people, like you said, he would get the lifelong judoka. They would start when they were five. They'll get people like me that was just 13 starting it. So, he tailored the program to everybody and essentially we would have you know i, I don't want to come across as making up numbers but pro city probably had like the largest turnout maybe like 80 70 kids just for the high school try like not tryouts because everybody would like everybody would make the team but you'd have to like formulate who's going to fight on the team sure but um essentially it was a, it, it was it was really like a community and it was a it was a place for like a 13 year old kid that I could go there I could I could be exposed to uh what an elite high school judoka practice is like what are they training like um how does a coach talk to these um uh I don't want to say elite competitors but high school competitors so I kind of, right. I kind of got to see what that looks like uh another aspect is my brother Louis was very, uh, uh, I don't know. He just like became obsessed with judo. Um, right. and I, at that time, I still look up to my brother, but at that time, like if he d dressed a certain way, I would dress a certain way. If he listened to certain music, like I would listen to the same music. So I was like a copycat. So if Louis was doing judo, I had to do judo. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that actually made me stay because eventually, you know, Louis, Louis was actually, a. uh, uh, uh a keystone member of that high school judo team. So he already had like an aura about him. So when I started showing up around the dojo, people were like, Oh, that's Louis's brother. Oh, that's Louis's brother. And I think I, I think I wrote, uh, uh, at that time of my life, I really, uh, gravitated towards that. And I wanted to, yeah, I want to be Louis's brother. And I want to, I see my brother doing good. I want to also be at that same level. So I think it, 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 it elevated, uh, it me to that level as well. I think what you're saying is like mentorship is important. And you had not only a mentor as a sensei, but you had, you know, your big brother as a mentor, but, and then Roy Kawaji. I mean, how cool is it that you're still not just friends or connected, but you're very connected. You guys are still sharing the mat after all these years. That must feel good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, 20, you know, I met him when I was 13 and I'm 36 now. So 23 years later, and we're still running Portland judo together. And, um, yeah, I think uh, even how I started this podcast, like just being surrounded by a real martial artist with and, and real authentic people from the beginning of my judo journey, um, I think I'm always seeing the the fruits of that labor that they put into me now. In that my work ethic, whether it be still training judo, whether it be teaching classes, whether it be producing content for judo fanatics, um, I'm very fortunate that I was surrounded by by uh, key people at that time of my life. My Another asterisk of that life was that my, my family life was kind of going through turbulence during that time too. So when I was 13, um, my household was kind of in, in a lot of turbulence. And I think I found judo as, and it's kind of a cliche, but as an escape, something that I could apply myself to, something that got me out of the house, something that really I could focus on. Sure. Um, something that I could uh, perfect my craft and be good at. Because I, I think I had like, I had like, uh, moderate athleticism. So if I actually applied myself and tried to get good at this, I think I can. And it kind of hooked me at a young age to really try and uh, be as good as I can.